Hey guys, what's up? I'm Christian and that's Corey and we are the Powerful Nerdcast. And anyway, you guys, we had a WTF podcast moment because we messed up. We were recording everything and uh, accidentally I put my camera angle all in slow motion and <laughs> then uh, the, the computer only recorded for 28 minutes and we got to the end of the thing and we're like, we can't release like a 24 minute podcast. So exactly. what do we do? So here we are. Uh, just set everything up, just going to introduce the whole concept of a half-assed intro here <laughs> and keep it moving and let you guys at least hear the, the half we did talk about. Mm -hmm. But it was good stuff. It was. Uh, and it's kind of a shame, too, because we did have a guest this week. It's our very good friend, Cody. Both me and Christian have known him for a long time. We've been wanting to have him on the show for a long time because he's real charismatic, very funny, and a long very passionate friend. person. Yeah. And um, we only got about 30 minutes of his material, so we are going to include that in the podcast, but we do want to release just a little bit more, so we're just going to riff and talk for a little bit longer so we can just put a little more length on this episode um but yeah we are sorry that we messed this up but again remember uh it's not really going to affect the audio version of this podcast so you'll still be able to enjoy that it'll probably be even more enjoyable now yeah. than the, uh, <laughs> the uh, video one where the first half is going to be simply just all audio and then it's going to be back to us for a random couple of minutes but uh there it is we do apologize for the uh, technical difficulties uh but still the show must go on and one of the other things i want to talk about before we get too into the show uh and the intro plays and all that fun stuff is um, uh, definitely want to shout out Rogue Intel because you guys are awesome and thank you so much for helping us get our uh, podcast on iTunes and giving us a place to stay on the web outside of YouTube. Really appreciate that. And if you guys do like our podcast, please make sure and give them thumbs up and whatnot. So thank you guys so much for watching. Let's get to the podcast we do have. My friends, we are the Powerful Nerdcast. I am Corey, and joined with me as always is my good friend Christian. And today no. we have a very special guest, one of our best friends in the world, Cody. Hey. Oh man, it's so good to have you here. Yes. We've been wanting to have you on the show for a really long time because honestly, I think you're one of the funniest guys ever. You're really, really snappy, and you're also a true nerd. I, I try to be. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've been really stupid busy with school and work and I don't know what else and I can be busy with house, I guess. And also, we haven't had a guest on for a long time, so we're glad we have Cody on as our next guest. Yes. And we want to have more guests, so we're glad you're here. Guests and are good. We've been friends for, like, ever. Yeah. Like, yeah, something uh, like that. Senior, or freshman year of high school. Yeah, so. I've known Cody freshman, since middle school. Seventh grade. Mm-hmm. Okay, you guys the win. Dolphins fly at midnight. Yes, that, that still that, has a lot of meaning. That was for the me. code word for happy birthday to our teacher. Yeah, which we bugger about <laughs> yeah. every single day. The every Dolphins day. fly at midnight. Mm -hmm. That sounds and like the beginning of a mission or something. It, that was the point. I think <laughs> we had. The, we also tried to do a, a skateboarding. The magazine Eagle has landed. With mm -hmm. Your cousin Davis, which was basically just an excuse for us to like write the most nasty shit possible. <laughs> It was so, like, sick grinds, or, like, what are you guys talking about? Like, it was just profanity. <laughs> yeah, profanity. Like, That's we, all it was. We discovered the word fuck, so we wanted to use it as often as possible. Well, I mean, it almost works for, like, a period in writing. It, so. it, and it did it for us. Uh, we, that's we, so funny. we did our best. It was Davis's kick three-letter word, mag. That was the <laughs> name of exactly it. That's exactly what it was. Oh, my gosh. I totally forgot about the name of it. But, yeah, that was uh, a lot of fun. But what was also cool about back in the day is that we were also pretty big fans of anime. And even today... We're still pretty big fans. Cody, I'd say that uh, both of us grew up watching a lot of Toonami. Uh, Absolutely. What, what were some of your favorite shows? Lord, Cowboy Bebop was on Toonami for a short while. I mm -hmm. loved the shit out of that one, Outlaw Star. Um, of course, everybody's favorite, the one that got me started on anime, was Dragon Ball Z. Damn straight. It, yes. That, that was, the, what was it, the Saiyan Saga, the very first episode I saw. Mm -hmm. I watched... Uh, Yamcha get blowed up by them little green vegetable men. You're like, this isn't Looney Tunes. What's going on? <laughs> like, where's, where's Bugs Bunny? Yeah, exactly. But uh, one of the biggest struggles about uh, being an anime fan, especially one in North America, is the pronunciation of names. And Absolutely. this is something uh, that we are not new to. Um, you know, we've been doing our Super Kami Guru 9000 YouTube page for years. We review anime. And uh, even after doing years. it for so long, 
we still all the time mispronounce names and words, and we get a lot of flack for that. You know, every once in a while we'll get some messages. Uh, my favorite one as of recent, which uh, came oh, last Corey. week, uh, which was learn to pronounce you uncultured fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I just saw that. And I was like, you know what? I think it's finally time we started to talk <laughs> about uh, the pronunciation of certain names and things. And uh, you know, I understand why people get upset about this. They're really passionate about these series. They want to see people represent them in their most purest of form. You know, it even takes me back when we were first starting making videos. One of the main things we had to do was get the names right. Yeah. Our, first of all, we did so many takes because we thought videos had to be perfect. And we do these like <laughs> short little like 30 second bursts and then just piece it all together. But names, like I remember us strategically trying to figure out how not to say names. And you even do it like with your Bleach reviews. You just don't say the main guy's name. Yeah, there's a character in the series right now who's like the main villain. He's like one of the main characters. I can't even say his name. He's the uh, the leader of the Quincy army. And it's and... not that you don't know how to say his name. It's mm -hmm. that you're not sure even so much as within the Bleach fan base, which one is right. Exactly, because he technically has two <laughs> names. The first one, literally, his name is pronounced Ewok, like a freaking furry creature from the planet of Endor. That that throws me off entirely. Exactly. And then another name, which is Juhabok. They don't sound similar at all, but apparently they're like the same thing. That's and a little anti-Semitic, though. It is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Hmm. You can lose, uh, you get a lot of trouble for that in today's culture and world with the PC everything. Oh, that's a whole nother yeah, topic. Whole nother we'll we're, stay on the anime. We'll stay we're we're going to get to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, even like earlier in the day when I was a big fan of Naruto, uh, you know, the evil organization known as the Akatsuki, I used to call them the Akatsuki. Oh, shit. That's not how you pronounce it? Uh, no, it is not. We'll forget about that one. <laughs> okay. But, uh, but oh, that's, no. uh, that's one of those really common misconceptions. But the names tend to be a little more difficult, you know. And uh, Cody, seeing as how you're sort of like the everyday man for anime, you're sort of a casual fan, you're not too hardcore, but you still really like that stuff, uh, I just wanted to give you some names uh, I wanted to hear you yeah, pronounce. Sure. And these are just from a couple different series. I'm not going to say which because that might actually help you a little <laughs> bit in the pronunciation. Uh, but we'll go ahead and start with this uh, very first character who's uh, very important. <laughs> okay, so... I okay. have. I'm going to get my spectacles ready. Oh, my gosh. Hagoromo Atsutsuki. There we go. That was actually pretty decent. Can you That's, say that one more time? That first part. Can you say it three times fast? Hagoromo, Hagoromo, Hagoromo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what Cody is trying to say is the name of the Sage of the Six Paths, who is, uh, you know, basically one of the Hagoromo. biggest heroes in the Naruto universe. And even I still have problems saying that. Hagoromo, and then his last name, which uh, Otsutsuki. But, uh, but here's the thing. We can all say um, in our funny We could Japanese get, voices. you know, punished for that because I could just say Otsutsuki, but then there's someone who's going to say, no, it's actually Otsutsuki. You know, what, <laughs> what are you, E Honda? Exactly. I'm not, I'm not E Honda. That's the thing. And, uh, you know, they really jump down your throat about those things. But uh, let's try this next one. This is a very common character I'm sure you're familiar with. Yeah, I'm probably, I'm, I'm going to say this with so much confidence, and I'm probably going to be wrong. <laughs> I was going to say it with so uh, much confidence. Madara Uchiha. Ooh, you see, you get crucified for that, yeah. because it's not Madara <laughs> Uchiha, it's Madara Uchiha. Yeah, you got to, like, really, like, emphasize that, otherwise you're going to get yelled. Well, what if I don't feel like reading the episode? What oh, if I wanna, too bad, too bad. What if I just want to watch it in English? Doesn't matter, you're not a real oh, fan. Watch it in English, doesn't matter. yeah. Oh, man. No I just way. got glasses. Everything was blurry and difficult for me before. Exactly. I mean, basically, you're an uncultured fuck. Uh, let's <laughs> try uh, the next one. That almost looks like a misspelling. Yeah. Mm, that's it's not. Is, is this guy Indian? <laughs> um, Perinita Parnjigjoss. Ooh, yeah. I, you know, th <laughs> this you one's kind it? of unfair because I don't it? even know how to pronounce that one right that's there. That's bullshit. Exactly. But I don't think anybody really does either. <laughs> this is one of those characters from Bleach. And Bleach is an interesting beast because it's based in Japanese culture, but then you also have characters like the Arankar, and all of their names are Spanish. And then you have the Quincy characters. Most of their names are German-sounding. And this is another one of them. And this is a character that's currently appearing in the series right now, fighting against Kenpachi, which is a freaking great fight. Uh, but Pernita Parkinjas. I don't even Can really... you say that in Indian? Like with yeah. an Indian accent? Uh, Pernita Parkinjas. <laughs> that's it. There we go. <laughs> I'm going to get in so much trouble for that. Um, uh, this next one, though, this is another one of those crazy ones. Go ahead, Cody. Give it a Ooh. shot. <laughs> yeah. Okiora. Okiora. Cypher! <laughs> say that again. You might have actually gotten that. Cypher? Ukiora, Cypher. That's actually really, really close. It oh, might yeah. even be on the money. I might be wrong. I always say Urukiora. 
Um, but Iruki I'm Roya. going with the Spanish pronunciation of the rolling R's. So. <laughs> it does give. Well, is that a is that a Spanish one? Is that a Spanish? It name? is. That is a, another go. one of the uh, key Aron card characters from the series yeah, who had an amazingly. Why are you not rolling your R's, then, yeah. Corey? Jesus, can't do it. <laughs> you uncultured fuck. I can't do you it. I'm uncultured. Fuck. Um, now That's we the title already of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that is totally gonna be it. Remember that, you uncultured fuck. I'm making this guy famous. Oh, um, now we already discussed. <laughs> we already discussed Akatsuki. Um, like I said, Akatsuki? I always, I used to say Akatsuki, and you know I never got any flack for it back in the day. Uh, it was While only you were just until, hanging out with us. Yeah, basically, yeah. And then you got on the internet. And then we got on the internet and we started reviewing, it and people didn't like it. Now this last one is a character you're probably familiar with. Go ahead yeah. and say it. Yusuke Urameshi. Ah, it's Yusuke Urameshi, not Urameshi. <laughs> Urameshi! Yeah. Your mom's a meshi. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's a um, but good yeah, safety now, joke there. One of my biggest things about the pronunciation and something that I've always harped on is if you know who I'm talking about and you have to take the time to correct me, what's the fucking point? You already now, know who I'm talking if about. If you get a name confused for another name mm-hmm. or you're saying the name so wrong someone can't even follow what you're talking about, exactly. there's an issue. Yeah. But if you know who they're talking about, but you're like, I say it this way, mm-hmm. it's sort of annoying. That's why I go extra uncultured with it. And even when I'm at home talking <laughs> with the uncultured. old lady about it, instead of even trying anybody's name, like I don't even say Ichigo, I say, you know, the main character, the redheaded ginger fuck. <laughs> Like, and everyone knows who you're talking about. Yeah, they about. know what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's or, the most you know, basic the Quincy, way to say Quincy, his Quincy buddy. Like, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't care how to pronounce his name because I don't, I don't want some, like, uptight, diehard Maybe fan coming up. playing, at like, like, devil's no. advocate. Some people just enjoy the show because of the names. That, that's one of the biggest things and one of the biggest comments I've heard we is don't. that we're, uh, we're actually insulting, like, the language. You know, we're not doing it justice. Well, you know. this is the way we learned how to talk. This mm-hmm. is the way we make noises to communicate, and that's not the same way <laughs> as mm-hmm. they do. We also speak English, which yeah. is one of the most backwards fucking languages Boy, in the I world. Well, I speak American. That's right. <laughs> but, like, America. Uh, one of my favorite things, uh, a lot of times I don't even, like, comment back to these people, but if I ever do, I always tend to uh, just link them, them to this video, <laughs> which is uh, done by uh, the Angry Video Gamer. I was about James to bring that Wolf, up, actually, yeah. Which is, uh, he does this series, uh, which is called, uh, what's Bu- you know, What's Bullshit, where he basically just talks about things that piss him off, and it could be anything as ridiculous as just pronouncing things or just like how he hates the way certain dvd covers open he made a whole video about that what? and it's hilarious it's fantastic. um but uh he goes over Got like too the much entire... time on his hand exactly <laughs> and he uh he says the same thing too it's like if you know what i'm talking about what's the fucking difference everybody talks different talk the way you want or otherwise fuck you that's basically what the way it is that'd be like if i went up to the northern states up to yankee territory and said it's coffee fuck you uncultured fuck not coffee exactly but i know what you're saying yeah. like it's just it's an accent it's the way they spin it and uh you know another one of the things that uh it's culture also- it is yeah yeah uncultured no 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 it's, only- it's cultured you uncultured what? you know fuck <laughs> you guys said it that time <laughs> oh i love it but yeah it's it's definitely one, been one of the biggest struggles but the fact of the matter is you're I'm, in strugglesville yeah mayor strugglesville <laughs> uh you know it, it's not that easy and especially with the english language you know like you know james rolls of these and saying you know when you go to a funeral you don't bury someone, you bury them. It's with a U. A berry is something that you eat, like a blackberry. It's actually pronounced bury. You know, it doesn't really make any sense. But So when I'm eating beef, I'm burying the beef because it's something I eat. Mm-hmm. And I'm burying it in my gullet. I don't know, that was a, that was a stretch. No, I bury. like that. I was a stretch. Bury it in my gullet. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to bury it in my gullet when I bury it But really, at the end of the day, I think it's just a matter of tomato and tomato. <laughs> And uh, really, that's just the way the internet is. More people are looking to correct you than they are to, you know, join People in. are looking to be offended. And if you're looking here, please don't be offended. <laughs> if you're looking here, you're probably going to get offended. Probably. Mm. And speaking of uh, offended, it seems like today everybody is just getting offended by the most ridiculous things possible. I think we're getting way too sensitive. And that leaks us to uh, Hulkamania, us. Hulk Hogan. Brother! <laughs> who has just been stripped of his titles and Bullshit. all of his fame and all the amazing things. This has got to be the worst thing to he's happen to famous, Hulk Hogan. He's infamous. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's really reached that status. Unfortunately, he's probably not going to get any more work. But uh, honestly, this is probably the worst thing to happen to Hulk Hogan since uh, Suburban Commando, and that's really saying a lot. <laughs> so, um, do you remember Three Ninjas 3? Oh my god, I didn't even see Three Ninjas What 3. was the name of the wrestler he played in that? I forgot. They made a fake wrestler for him. Uh, I don't know. That, that's what we were going to look at. Everybody's right looking at him now. <laughs> no, Cody's Three got it. Three Ninjas. That was definitely... I loved, I loved the first one Three Ninjas, Hulk Hogan's character. That was one of those like, guilty pleasures as a kid. That I was he the watching. Black Knight in that? 
<laughs> oh, it was too easy. Sorry. Yeah, but it's a shame because uh, uh, what are the stipulations of this video? It's uh, Hulk Hogan's audio coming out from many years ago. Many maybe being six, five, four, who knows, a few years ago. And he was recorded hanging out with his black friends and saying the N-word. And it's kind of like if you got a black friends, sometimes you get away with that and you feel funny and it's like fun because you're with your black friends. And the point is... I feel like people are doing a character assassination on him and they're overblowing the whole, whole thing. And like the WWE is like taking the safe route and because they don't want to seem like racist, but it's not really that racist. It's just fun to say he's racist. So everyone likes to pile on and just be like, get him. He said the N word. I don't care about the contents. Or the I, on the bright side, it's taking a little bit of heat off the cops. They're shooting all the black. The, the or it's taking the heat off Bill Cosby. <laughs> Yeah. The Bill Cosby thing is, first of all, Bill Cosby in his personal life sounds like a horrible, dark, evil person. But he has the history of being uh, in the public eye. Mm -hmm. uh, Jello pudding mm -hmm. guy. Such and a family man. The kids say the darndest things, yeah. you know. And Ghost dad. I watched that show with my family. <laughs> I watched kids say the darndest things with my family when I was young. And that while well, that guy's drugging chicks and he's like, it's pudding pop time, bitches. <laughs> it's you know? pudding pop. Kids, you go over here and play. I'm going to talk to your mothers. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, it's it, <laughs> it was this funny concept of uh, Judd Apatow was on the WTF uh, podcast. And he said, what about if when Bill Cosby goes to hell, he just gets raped by different versions of him for eternity? Like one time, <laughs> you know, it's just a jello pop like, pudding like guy. The, the Bill Cosby from the Cosby show comes in with a sweater and the cool, cool. Let me tell you something, you know, like he's the smart dad that rapes you at the end of the yeah. episode. And I really <laughs> hope it's like every version. I hope like the Simpsons, like Pokemon version is there. Yeah, everything. like they're all there they, and they're all raping and that's the hell he lives in. But getting back to the main point, it was funny because uh, Bill Cosby came on like uh, some news show. Me and my family were watching at dinner one night and my dad saw a Bill Cosby story pop up and I thought it perfect, perfectly encapsulated the whole Bill Cosby thing at this point. And it was... He looks at it and they're doing the coverage and he just turns to me. He's like, why don't they leave that poor pervert alone? <laughs> and <laughs> Cause they're just driving it in so hard, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, we get it. Bill Cosby's bad, but you are like kind of ruining my childhood too, man. Like we get it. Let's get him in jail. Let's not have him be a rich, successful person anymore. But like, mm -hmm. I'm done hearing about it. Bill Cosby fatigue. It's right up there with like Africa fatigue, you know, like we don't <laughs> care anymore. So, Sorry, I'm just saying that's kind of where I'm at right now with the mm -hmm. whole thing. And it's sad that they're kind of trying to throw uh, Hulk Hogan in that same cultural mm -hmm. fuck you grinder right now. Yeah. And tearing him down. Well, what is that saying? People love to build people up just to tear them down. Exactly. So it's sort of a shame that that's happening. To no, Bill it's, it's like an assault on our 80s childhood is really what it is. You know? <laughs> it, just, it's, it, it, it sucks that it has to happen to such like a legendary wrestler who is, you know, arguably the like... This is going to sound weird. The Michael Jordan of, like, WWE. Like, he's just one of the most well-known household name type of guys. And uh, I really... I'm not going to fault and, him for anything because, you know, I have those fond memories of Hulk Hogan as a kid. He um, was, like, in every wrestling game, and he was one of the strongest dudes. He was always the best. Every, you, you got into wrestling fights when you played the wrestling games over who got to play as Hulk Hogan. Exactly. Because you can't have two Hulk Hogans wrestling each other and one has it, it a would be cool. off They should pants. just remake those games, but he just like jumps off the top rope, smacks his uh, elbow, and mm -hmm. then he just says the N-word. And yeah. he hits you. <laughs> <laughs> secret move. Yeah, secret move. Yeah. But the, <laughs> the other thing that made the Bill Cosby thing so sad to me was my grandfather like just passed away in February. And he loved Bill Cosby. He had all the records and vinyl, and he was just such a Bill Cosby fan. And before he died, he had to hear about Bill Cosby rape, raping bitches. And it was so sad. It's like he had to, it had to smear that image real quick before he left the planet, and it was very sad. <laughs> Way to go, mainstream society. Way to go, truth, for coming out. I'm just going to remember Hulk Hogan <laughs> as Dave Dragon. From Three Ninjas. Dave Dragon. High Noon at Mega Mountain. Oh, oh man. So terrible. Was it was it, it was a Three Ninjas Three, three Ninjas, ninjas kick Knuckle back. Up or kick, kick, kick Back. back. Kick back. Yeah. Wasn't that one called Knuckle Up or am I remembering something? Well, maybe that was a special edition. I don't Might know, maybe. be. I don't know. That was a commentator. I can honestly say though I've never seen the third one. I've only seen so many movies too with the uh, Hulk Hogan. Like like I mentioned, Suburban Commando, which is one of those like so bad it's Good movies. That's also what has the uh, the classic Christopher Lloyd. Uh, I was frozen today. That's where that famous line came from. But uh, you know, even with all the wrestling, I think my favorite like thing from Hulk Hogan was this really small cameo he did in Gremlins Two, 
where uh, there's this scene in the movie where, like, the movie breaks the fourth wall and all the gremlins are, like, destroying the projector in the movie and this usher has to go into the theater and he sees Hulk Hogan sitting there and he's like, can you do something about this, please? And Hulk Hogan, like, turns around and he's like, do you think the Gremsters can stand up to the Holster? And he's, like, ripping off his shirt and shit. <laughs> oh, and he, I like, totally actually, forgot that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he actually gets the movie to, like, start up again. He, like, and he, like, looks at the guys like, it won't happen again, folks. And it was just, it was really funny. <laughs> and as stupid as that was, that was like the most well acted scene Hulk Hogan's ever been in. Well, that's his element. Yeah, it was, it was exactly. Him. They weren't telling him to be like, you know, they're like, just be Hulk Hogan, be who you are, which is like one of the most classic fucking wrestlers of all time. And even with all this happening, with all the bad press, uh, you know, I'm still gonna remember those amazing fights. Like, you know, look up Hulk Hogan versus Andre the Giant on YouTube. It's one of the best wrestling matches of all damn time. And I'm not even a very big wrestling fan. What do we call this condition where you don't want to let someone go as their previous version that you were in love with? Because a lot of people suffered from that with like... Uh, maybe rose-tinted glasses. Rose-tinted glasses because Michael Jackson, perfect. People yeah, another example. That guy yeah. fucking maybe molested kids and people are still okay with him today. Yeah, yeah there's still, there was pe- still people sitting outside of the, the fucking courthouse crying like, Free Michael! He makes beautiful music. Who cares if he touched Macaulay Culkin? <laughs> he was absolutely oh, okay with it look at him now no scars <laughs> strung out <laughs> <laughs> if anything he made a fantastic side character on South Park now it's like a, a living <laughs> ghost who constantly returns to haunt Ike I thought that was pretty good but I mean uh, yeah Michael Jackson's definitely in the same situation you know and it's one of those situations too like uh, what separates Hulk Hogan from uh, Cosby and Michael Jackson though is that there is evidence against Hulk Hogan yes we do have there is evidence against Bill Cosby exactly <laughs> it's a lot of women but you see, they, no, no, they, they no. Just they've re- even they've even uh, he did a deposition in 2005 mm-hmm. where he had to report to the court that yes he has given women drugs to help them pass out Huh. So he had that, that deposition came out to the public. Well, they just had headaches, and I was trying to make them feel. Yeah, better. and he uh, he said no, that was as part of the plea deal. He paid a woman off. Oh yeah, right. and but during the court proceedings, I had to gather evidence, and that was part of it. And uh, then he paid her off and settled outside of court. But those court documents were also sealed as part of the deal. <laughs> but recently, because Bill Cosby has had to defend himself and say he's never done that, a judge thought. Hey, you're kind of saying you're kind of getting it both ways. You're kind of getting to say, no, I didn't do it. But at the same time, making public statements about something that's obviously backwards to these court documents. So he said, I'm going to release them because you're kind of a famous person that's lying about raping people. You know, <laughs> well, the problem with this story and the Hulk Hogan and a lot of the other stories is uh, a lot of the mass public. Uh, they're getting their information from, you know reading a clip on Facebook. It was on my Facebook feed, so it's yeah. official. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, so yeah. If, if you took a little extra time, like earlier I took some extra time because I kept hearing about Hulk Hogan this, Hulk Hogan that. It's like, what what's going on with Hulk Hogan? I saw, you know, the Facebook thing. Hulk Hogan the racist, he said the N-word. And I was like, well, I'm going to take a little extra time and read an article about it and read a few of them. And it was it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen because people, like the DJ show, they're saying that he... Uh, he was dropping the N-bomb left and right. The DJ has publicly stated that wasn't racist. He was telling me about conversations between him and all his rapper buddies when they're sitting around having a chit-chat. He wasn't being derogatory. He wasn't being racist. He was simply telling me a story. I asked for the story. I'm in no way offended by this. It's simply just because of the whole race riots and race wars and race everything. Aren't you allowed to say things in the privacy of your own home? Like, you know, if he was just having a private conversation, I feel like he, he got his privacy almost violated. Mm. You know, I mean, this is, it's, it's real similar to what happened to the Clippers owner. You know, like that conversation. Ooh, what was his was, name? Uh, I, I forgot Schilling his name. But like, uh, I mean, that, you know, that's a conversation that was never meant to be heard. Oh, but, you that, know. that's even funny. Have you seen that uh, Bill Burr, his latest comedy special, he has a thing about that? Mm, no. No, he says in the jokes, he's like, the Clippers owner had to sell his team and he even said when he was talking to his girlfriend he's like i just don't want you to take pictures with black guys and post on instagram he's like i don't care if you fuck them just don't put pictures on instagram (laughs) of you with black guys because my friends are talking about it and he's like you can fuck them but you can't take pictures with them and people are like that's racist and i'm like that's actually as bill burr put it a pretty good deal you know you can that's a great deal. I wish I could get. I wish I could fuck all the black dudes I wanted to, as long as I didn't post pictures about it on social yeah. media. I know, it's a pretty good deal, and you get a Ferrari mm-hmm. out of the deal too, because he's like buying her stuff, and he had an apartment, he had her all set up. Yeah, she fucked herself on that one. Yeah, she had the fucking. She bit the hand that feeds. Is it a fucked up life? Yes, 
but it's an option. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> she took it. She took it for a yeah. while. Anyway, there's a lot of options in the way. Oh, no, she your life. took it all right. Oh man, she took that little limp, rickling dick. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, had to go there with it. <laughs> and his old oh. balls. You remember from Adam Sandler? What was that? Uh, uh, the Parent movie where he got a kid and he put down a newspaper. Uh, it's also Big Daddy. From, Big it's Daddy. Also from like, his, like his albums. Old he's, balls. He, what was it? He pretended to be the mom, like. You know, the cackin' boys. Oh God, that was that was back from the old. Let's, let's like, get into. Adam and you know what? Sandler. This it's funny. That was an yeah. amazing segue because we're sort of talking about like uh, childhood heroes from the '80s, like just being assassinated by the social media. Uh, we also have Adam Sandler, who I think we can all agree. Uh, back in the day when we were a little younger, in the mid '90s, like you know, Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore. Uh, you know, those movies were hilarious. The Water Boy. You know, they're, they're not. You know, they're not. <laughs> I'm high. a way of man it. Exactly. They're not. <laughs> they're not uh, high art or anything. They're not Shakespeare. They're Adam Sandler movies. Uh, but over the course of the last couple years, um, he's sort of just been making all of these crappy films with no effort put behind them. And uh, a lot of people felt that hey, it began. We, with we learned a Mickey. lesson at the end of it, though. So, you know, it's uh, appreciate your family. Okay, so let's walk through some of the <laughs> people. Okay, I'm looking on this article that's io9.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, welcome. We come from the future. It's yeah. kind of like a, a, a it's blog. very similar to like Gizmodo, Gizmodo or Kotaku. Gizmodo, Kotaku. Mm-hmm. They're part of the same network. The Giz mm-hmm. uh, Media Network, I think, mm-hmm. is what it's called. Um, anyway, so Adam Sandler has a hell of a lot to answer for is the title of the article. <laughs> and they just go through some of his biggest failures. Let mm-hmm. me just walk through a few. Uh, Little Nicky. This is probably the only thing I think we're all going to... Uh, disagree. disagree. Disagree with. That was a fucking artistic masterpiece. <laughs> it was it was high art. Uh, again, that's another one of those... Uh, Hot or I remember not, specifically, because sort of. uh, I, I like that you mentioned in seventh grade, that's when we discovered the word fuck. Yeah. Um, right before we went to high school, um, I think this was a movie that we watched over at your house, and uh, I don't know how uh, Dave approved of that, but... We were uh, totally, Super Dave? Yes, yeah, Super Dave. <laughs> dun, dun, and we dun, were dun. watching um, and his breakfast Little Mickey. And, you know, at the time, you know, obviously we were younger and impressionable. But even now, I still have a soft spot for that movie. I think it's, it's stupid, I think but that's, it's hilarious. That's part of the problem. Wham! Bam! Bam! Bay. Okay, so that was the half we did have. <laughs> yeah. It was great stuff. Uh, I always love talking about uh, Bill Cosby and rape with Cody. It was great. <laughs> I'm not even sure if that made it into that part of the show. Hopefully. Which is even better about... because if it didn't, that probably makes it sound so fucked up. People know what I'm talking about. Bill Cosby, the yeah, R word. Yeah, but we, uh, the second half of the show, uh, let's just give you guys kind of a rundown of some of the things that we discussed. Oh, that they um, missed? Yeah, that they missed. Uh, okay. we, we talked about the, uh, the failing uh, career of Adam Sandler because mm. his big summer movie was just released, which is called Pixels, which was about all of these video game aliens attacking Earth, and it allowed us to sort of reminisce about Adam Sandler's entire career and how it started out real strong with stuff like Billy Madison and Happy Gilmore, Woo! and then suddenly we ended up with like That's My Boy, and you know uh, the that one where time he, he played his sister, that time he played his sister, <laughs> or even the one where it's uh, just him hanging out with his friends. I think it's called Grown Ups. They yes. even made a sequel to that, Grown Ups Two, which took the high road, which involves a lot of deers pissing on people's faces. Well, then um, there's that time all those deers shit themselves in the animated version. Yeah, what is it up with him <laughs> in deers and bodily functions? The point is, we were discussing just sort of the degrading career and how, despite the fact that Adam Sandler movies now are definitely not that good, I still love his old CDs a lot, and I still highly that's, recommend them. That's to one people. of the things you always talk about is like his CDs. Every mm-hmm. time we get together, and when Adam Sandler comes up, you're like, "Remember Gay Robot? Remember yeah. all that? You know? Yeah, you remember the Talking Goat? Like all that the crazy shit? Goat. Like there's yeah. just there's so many classic." Uh, Adam Sandler skits that he had on his CDs which are way more racy and controversial than the stuff he does in his movies and they're also more well thought out because it's actually something that he produces himself all by himself just with his buddies so it sort of has like his trademark almost, original sense of humor it's almost like a uh, 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 like comedy skits that don't need video exactly yeah they're really mm-hmm. good stuff they like, do a great job of like painting an image in your head of like really what's going on because the sound design is so good mm-hmm. like it's the, not the, just voice acting like they have like a full like sound effects and everything yeah like the guys walk up you hear the feet like the talking goat search adam sandler the talking goat and just listen to that and that's like adam sandler in his jam without 
producers and Hollywood and everything else stacked on top yeah. of him. Not that that gives him an excuse because his shit is just... He's got to take, you know, it's been bad for so long. Yeah, and it's just, it's not getting any better. And a lot of that probably has to do with the fact that he's just dispassionate at this point. He just does not care. He's doing this for the paycheck. And that was no more evident than in the release of Pixels, which not only bombed, but pretty much finally made people realize, okay, this dude just needs to retire. Every single scene that he's in, he just sucks out the charisma of every other <laughs> actor. And, you know, you had people like Peter Dinklage, who's in this movie. You had Josh Gad, who didn't even need to be in this movie whatsoever. He could just collect royalty checks from voicing that dumbass snowman from Frozen for the rest of his life. But I don't hate Josh Gad, you know. I thought he was really great in uh, The Book of Mormon. Corey, you need to let it go. Let it go. Oh, my God. Okay. But, yeah, I have to admit, that was kind of clever. But okay, it makes continue. me angry that we actually had to mention that. Um, but, yeah, like I said, I, I recommend the old Adam Sandler CDs. Uh, if you want to look up something that's going to give you nightmares from one of the old CDs, look up The Psychotic Legend of Uncle Donnie. It's one of the funniest 20 minutes of my life. I always liked, are these two, he goes up to random people and he plays a tape. He's like, are these people working out or having sex? Yeah, that, that, that one's also that really one. good. That yeah. one's great. That one's, and just the sound effects are great. The voice acting, especially when you hear the uh, I, maybe they're fucking or maybe they're working out the two guys. We are definitely fucking. <laughs> I love when they say, like, we are two guys fucking. There are no dumbbells in this room at all. <laughs> it's just, it's... And he's like, they're uh, having sex. He's like, no, squats. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely one of the classics. But there it is. Uh, that was just something that unfortunately did not make it into the big show. Despite that, we did have some pretty cool news that came out over the weekend, which is something we want to discuss. There isn't much to say because nothing has been officially announced yet, but apparently Lionsgate is getting ready to produce a live-action Naruto movie. Well, I think that you and I both support the idea that anime should just stay anime, and it's not that people can't do it right. It's just it doesn't even look real. It doesn't At look all. good, and that in takes real you life. out of the experience. Yeah, and well, or maybe it's this. Maybe we like the way it looks so much that if it looks different, it just doesn't feel the same. Mm -hmm. Because Attack on Titan, even though I've heard some reviews, uh, actually from you, you you said you read a review of Attack on Titan. Yeah, it said it was awful. It said it was awful. So it makes me like, but how could they mess that up? Like, At least it resembles the source material a little bit. Yeah. At does. least on the most superficial of levels. It There's still looks like it. Yeah. There's smoke. It's dark and dreary. You know, mm -hmm. but like, it, just, it suffered from things. I don't know. I haven't seen it. I'm kind of just riffing off the things mm -hmm. you told me earlier. Yeah. I haven't seen it. But that it does make a good point that real life stuff just doesn't translate when it comes to anime. So mm -hmm. I don't know why, but... Um, and what about... Um, actually, you brought up a point that you said you don't want to see Naruto as a white guy. I don't. That's but like one of my... blue-eyed, and I could see Naruto as a white guy. But I he's not. Him. His name is Naruto Uzumaki, and, you know, they're the hardcore fans who are going to say, no, his name's actually Naruto Uzumaki, you well, know? <laughs> they just need to get Jarrett Leto in there with his big blue eyes. <laughs> no! I don't want to see all of my favorite characters reduced to whitewashing, especially Hollywood the the whitewashing. People, the rest of the people need to be the right races. But besides that... You know, Naruto. Remember right? Avatar? No, no one speaks of the Avatar. We everything got messed up in that movie. We we cannot do a repeat of that. Don't even let us like forget Dragon Ball Evolution. It happened. It was a thing. People paid for it. I was one of the stupid fuckers who actually paid to see did that you, movie in theaters. Did you? Well, I'm gonna find something for you. I want you to experience this. Oh great! This is gonna be wonderful. I mean, I distinctly remember before Dragon Ball Evolution came out, like you guys didn't want to go see it. I went and saw it with another friend, and then I came back and I just gave you guys the most like scathing one hour rant, <laughs> just about how much this movie just like sucked my balls. It was so freaking bad in every possible way. And uh, I'm glad that it's going to be done because this week we are going to see the newest Dragon Ball Z movie, Resurrection of F, in theaters, English dub, son! We got our tickets months ago. I hope you guys actually have an opportunity to see it. I just looked at their website. There are tickets available. Make sure to buy those so that you can go see this movie and let the companies know that we want to see more anime in movie theaters. We want to see more wider releases and closer releases because this is another big step for anime being seen in America. And 
God, that is going to be so great seeing that movie in the first time in the theaters and just being there with all the Dragon Ball fans. And it's just going to completely wash away all of the suck that was Dragon Ball Evolution. And my God, was there so much suck in that movie. I want to make like a whole podcast talking about that movie. Well, just about how good. everything is so messed up. Not just on the fact that it does not adapt to anything from Dragon Ball in a good way, but that it's just a bad movie in general. It's a bad story, bad acting. It's just fucking bad. I don't like it. <laughs> Okay, so and now we're looking what appears to be Dragon Ball Sheep. If you guys want to check out Dragon Ball Sheep, we'll put a link for that in the description box below. It's a non-profit parody, uh, which I guess is going to be all about... So it's uh, it's Goku vs. Vegeta, Saiyan Saga. That's yeah. what someone remade with goats. And... Uh, it's just great because... And it's the, it's the original dub. Oh, the original? The ocean, the ocean Group dub. The Ocean Group dub. Yeah, the one that originally aired on Toonami. And, you know, it's just some great <laughs> After Effects used here. And it's quite good. <laughs> Describing what I'm saying right now, too, is ridiculous. I mean, it... <laughs> <laughs> is this sheep just flying around? It looks like he's getting ready to do the Gallic Gun. But the point is, if they can make this look good, why did Dragon Ball Evolution suck so bad? It, 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 that's a really good point. This is way more Dragon Ball than yeah. Dragon Ball Evolution ever was, and it's fucking sheep who are being re <laughs> over and, and put these, like, crappy half-assed effects on. And it still looks better. Just the, the crappy aura Around. that they use is better than anything... <laughs> <laughs> the the, the two so sheep paws coming up. Oh my gosh. So this is basically a parody of the big standoff they have when yeah. they do the Gallic Gun versus the Kamehameha. Which I still honestly believe uh, that Kamehameha scene is my favorite Kamehameha of the whole series. It's quite good. And it's funny too because it's it shouldn't good. be that good because it's just regular Goku. But during that time they're like, we've never had Goku do an attack this crazy. Let's just make it go nuts. And that's what they did. <laughs> <laughs> Goat shooting it from his mouth. <laughs> yeah. All the other sheep are running away. Uh. <laughs> okay. I forgot that's how it is. Yeah, the, the final shot, they don't even, like, finish the fight. It's just these uh, two little sheep are running up and uh, licking the balls of the no, other one. No, it wasn't the balls. It was udders. It was a mom's. It was the udders. They were going for some milk. Yeah. I'd say they're mom. going for some balls. <laughs> Dragon balls. That's what they were going for. Uh, but yeah, and Check I love how they, they use the uh, the midway music whenever there's like the midway through the episode. The thought that was pretty funny. Uh, yeah, try to get this podcast back online now, Corey. Yeah. Sheep. Sheep. Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> we're, we're hitting the high road on this episode. Uh, but going back to Naruto again. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Like I said, nothing has been set in stone. It's just in development. It's being produced. It might not even happen. I hope it never happens, but it's being apparently worked on by a guy by the name of Avia Rad, who has produced some very big films from Marvel, such as the Spider-Man series and, of course, Iron Man. And he even claims that he's a fan of the series himself. So there could be the possibility there's going to be some passionate stuff behind this. Um, but the only reason this could possibly maybe even work is if they actually take a little bit of inspiration from that Naruto live-action show, which, remember, it used those costumes, which looked really freaking amazing. Oh, yeah. Wasn't it a fan-made film where it was just uh, Naruto and Rock Lee fighting? Well, there's that, but I'm actually talking about the uh, the big uh, musical show that they had in Japan. No, I've remember? never seen that. No. Remember we had the podcast about it? We talked about it. We showed you those, those pictures. of those, Oh, yeah. I never saw it in it, action. Yeah, it actually it. almost looks like, like an even better version of, like, it literally looks like they took the characters and made them real. Like, they had the same outfits, and they made them slightly more realistic. But when you looked at them, you're like, oh, that's Naruto, that's Sasuke, that's Hinata, that's frickin' Orochimaru, and it looks just like them. And they're played by actual Japanese people, so it definitely had that feeling of Naruto. If they could somehow do that and make it work, maybe. But I'm, just the fact that it's a live-action version of what is effectively a cartoon, just it just doesn't work for me, you know? It, it never has. Even with all the superhero movies, like all the Batman ones, like, you know, Batman vs. Superman, looks awesome. I still think the best Batman movie is an animated one, which is called uh, Batman Under the Red Hood or Batman Mask of the Phantasm. I think those are infinitely better than any other live-action Batman film. But that's because Batman's a comic book character. He looks like a drawn, cartoonish type of character, so it translates better to that type of style. But when you see it in live action, it can look kind of goofy sometimes, you know? Like turning his neck. Yeah. Because <laughs> they can't turn their necks. You know, it's, you it's know? weird. It's weird. You know, you can't turn your neck. you got to get help from Morgan Freeman because he's got to get that extra freckle. 
<laughs> so I, I just got done playing Stick of Truth. I apologize. What do you think of Stick of Truth, Corey? So oh my like, God. This is such a belated review because this game came out uh, a couple years ago. <laughs> uh, South Park, Stick of Truth. One of the best RPGs I've ever played, period. It's not a very I, difficult game. I don't game. even like RPGs, mm -hmm. but I loved that game. Well, it appealed to me because I'm not a big fan of RPGs either. Only a select few, but my favorite RPG series of all time is Paper Mario. And this game is basically exactly like that in every single way. Like, the battle system is the same. It's dumbed down just a little bit more, but only in the can way that South Park... you block the same way? You can. You can, okay. like, hit a button, like, right before you're attacking. You can block it, okay. reduce the damage, or have no damage whatsoever. And, of course, you have badges and modifiers and all types of things, just like any other RPG. Yeah. Can you make them bleed in, in Mario? <laughs> you cannot make them bleed in Mario. That's just something Mario's probably never going to do. Yeah. Uh, and for good reason. It doesn't need to. But uh, South Park, the Stick of Truth, just... It was one of the most fun, hilarious experiences I've ever had. Just, if you like the show, it's the ultimate love letter to fans. And uh, I really wish that I would have picked it up sooner. But uh, I'm glad that I went ahead and played through the whole thing, because now I'm even more excited for the Fractured Butthole, which I think <laughs> is going to be amazing. And I just wanted an excuse to say that. <laughs> South Park, the Fractured Butthole, coming soon to PS4 and Xbox uh, One, I believe. Uh, so I can't, probably on PC as well. Uh, but yeah, what I also think is really funny about the next game too is uh, it's one of the few games where they made it look so good on PS3, like it literally looks like the show. In fact, just the other week, one of my friends actually walked in while I was playing it, and he's like, "Hey, South Park's on." I'm like, "No, I'm playing a game." Yeah. And I, I swear to God that he was actually like completely fooled by that. And uh, you know, even with the next game, they can't really make it look that much better because they've already perfected what it looks like too. So this is one of those video games. If they continue to make these. They're always going to look like this, which I think is Here's really the thing, funny. Though, they burn through so many references. What do you think? Like, I almost wonder. That's the thing, though. There, there are still hundreds of references they haven't even touched. That's very game. true. And yet, there's there's still so much room for all these other side characters, like you know, all the like the the people from the school. They only really focus on like Mr. Mackey. You yeah, know, there's not yeah. too much Mr. Garrison or anything. There's still a lot of side characters who don't appear, and a lot of just really obscure things. I but they still like manage. This, this serves like the beginning of like. Like the series. It almost mm -hmm. felt like it more focuses on the beginning because yeah. it has the bar and mm -hmm. everything. It has the aliens and that's early And, and, and to be fair too they can uh, expand upon it because you know as good a job as they did there's still a lot of things that's actually missing from like the town of South Park. Like there's still a lot of houses and people. Like we don't know where these characters really live. There's only like a block that has like 10 houses on it but there's well over 10 students at South Park. That's very know? true. So they could expand and just make the map maybe just a little bit bigger and uh, allow us to explore maybe go to places other than Canada like we've already gone to go to Canada in the game you just go north like constantly yeah. you go into this like lost forest kind of like in the Legend of Zelda and they say to get to Canada you go north then north then north again and then north because Canada's in the north I think it'd be funny if you keep going south you go to hell and you can meet Satan in and oh, all, yeah, that all the cool. people in hell like Saddam Hussein <laughs> Saddam Hussein in a video game they could get away with it the things they got away with in this game Oh, oh my, my god. god. Yeah, it went pretty far. I don't even want to, like, I don't want to spoil too much because you, maybe you've played it or not, but if you're a fan of South Park and RPGs, you must play it. It is just an absolute must, and it's hilarious. Just from beginning to end, there were times I'd have to put down the controller. I was laughing so hard. There was a one moment of the game I was laughing so much, I missed on this one attack, and I got hit. I don't even want to say what hit me. <laughs> like, that's the thing. By saying what actually hit me because I didn't hit the prompt at the right time would give away one of the funniest moments of the entire game. Let's just say there were two things that hit me. So, you guys got to just check this game out. If you have the ability to get it on PS3 or whatever system it's you're on. It's super cheap, too. It's like $25 now. Even cheaper than that. You know, you can get it used on Amazon for like 10 bucks. Get it. Seriously, pick it up. It's great. It's really, really fun. And also, our end characters were so different. Like, mm -hmm. I had a warrior, you had a Jew. Yeah, <laughs> there's a Jew <laughs> class. That's not a joke on anything. There really is a class called Jew. Oh, it doesn't okay. really matter, though. I mean, I still use melee weapons and stuff. No, yeah, the melee weapon system is in there no matter who you are. Mm -hmm. I feel like, well, maybe if you're a mage, it's different. Yeah, that was the thing. I never even bothered with that. I just went straight for, like, ooh, I get swords and shit. I'm using that and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then when I found that I had the a katana blade at the very end of the game, which is the strongest weapon in the game, just dominates everything, and you can attach, like, different modifiers and patches to it. I made it, like, a big fire katana blade, which just... It makes no sense, but it's South Park, and it's great, and it's got Morgan Freeman in it. <laughs> <laughs> The end. Everything about that game is just great. And if mm -hmm. you're a South Park fan, you should just you should be watching. Yeah, if you're a David Hasselhoff fan, you should check it out. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's got something for everybody, and uh, it also references my absolute favorite episode of South Park, which is uh, Woodland Critter Christmas, which I really want to do like a top ten South Park episodes. 
Like, because the new season's going to be coming up in a couple of months, and uh, that's something I've always really wanted to do. Everybody's, like, done their own renditions of that, and with that show, I find that almost every list is completely different, uh, so I'd really yeah, like to so sort of... much there's so much to watch mm-hmm. and so much to like. And, and it hits so different, uh, so many different styles of humor. And uh, South Park is still, like, the only, like, adult animated show, like, when a new episode comes out, like, I have to be there front and center when it airs for the first time. I fell off The Simpsons. I'm pretty much done with Family Guy and American Dad and all those. But whenever a new season of South Park is in, I'm just like, mm, this is going to be amazing. I can't wait for it. <laughs> it is always good. Mm-hmm. There's always a few duds sometimes in of the course. season. Of course. But even the bad episodes, I still always get a couple of laughs. No, yeah, they're good. They're mm-hmm. good. Well, let's wrap this up, Corey. I feel yeah. like we added some stuff. And thank yeah. you guys for hanging on with us as we do our uh, impromptu fix to this podcast because we just still have some good stuff there. Mm-hmm. And we're glad you guys still got in with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, make sure to check us out on RogueIntel.com. Check us out on iTunes. We desperately need more reviews. So review us on iTunes. That's my ooga booga. Did yeah. it scare them? You think mm-hmm. it did? I think it did. I think they're about to. I see read. the piss all over the floor. Damn. Mm-hmm. Clean that up. And then after you're done with that, make sure and thumbs up this video and subscribe to our channel. That was a pretty good plug. I'm proud of that. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, Powerful Nerdcast is out.